The Saudi government announced today that more than a thousand people have died during this year's Hajj pilgrimage in Saudi Arabia, saying many of the cases were due to extreme heat. Hajj is the annual Islamic pilgrimage to Mecca from Saudi Arabia that is required of every able Muslim once in their life. The Saudi government released a statement saying majority of those who died were, quote, unauthorized to perform Hajj and included, quote, several elderly and chronically ill individuals. A couple from Maryland are among those who died. Deaths are not uncommon at the Hajj, which has seen at times over two million people travel to Saudi Arabia uh, for a five day pilgrimage. About this, and I cannot imagine how heartbroken you are. How did you learn about what happened to your parents? And did I get this right? Your parents are 65 and 71? Yes, that's correct. What happened? I mean, how did how were you notified? You knew that they were going uh, to the Hajj. It's something they've been wanting to do since they married many, many uh, years ago. And now they're embarking on their trip. You thought they're probably having a fantastic time. But then how were you informed that this tragically you know, ended with their passing? So we received a, a phone call from someone within their group who advised us that they had been missing for a few days, that they were the only two who hadn't returned back to their hotel after the Hajj was completed. I tried tracking them um, a few times on the phone. I believe their phones may have died. We tried reaching out to the U.S. Embassy. Um, ultimately, the same person who advised us that they were missing advised that he went around to a bunch of hospitals and that they have passed away. And I was able to confirm that with the Consulate General's office in Saudi Arabia that they had passed away. Well, that must have been, I mean, unbelievably horrible and difficult to try and get confirmation about the whereabouts of your parents to find out that they uh, passed away. Have you been given any kind of explanation as to, you know, the circumstances? What happened? Oh. All we know is that it was of natural causes and someone from the U.S. Embassy did advise that natural causes could have been due to a heat stroke, which based on the temperature, people were saying it was over 110 degrees. There are millions of people. They have to log, walk long hours. So it was more than likely a heat stroke for both of my parents. Mm. Uh, your mom was a, a nurse, right? She just retired last year. And as I mentioned, they've been wanting to do this for a really long time. You know, how were yes. they prepared or prepped at all about any possible dangers? I mean, what what kind of support system do you think your 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 parents had while embarking on this trip? Honestly, I don't think that they were properly prepared for this trip. Um, there was a group of them, maybe up to 100 people that were traveling under a certain agency. And, you know, they saved their life savings. I think it was a person that they've saved their entire lives to save their entire lives to embark on this journey. And they weren't they didn't receive the proper from the proper documents. Just it was just a nightmare overall experience. Of Shalom, calling La Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. So, get the bond and with GMS and honestly, Yaki and peace and best for your brothers and sisters that listen. Hopefully, let's call him La Yahweh Bashim Al Shah. And this was in the video I was going to do because um, you know, we briefly mentioned this at camp, you know, about those uh, Islamic zombies <clears throat> making a hajj to Mecca, right? Uh, around the Kaaba stone, which is an idol which is a meteorite that came out of the sky. You know, we did videos on Islam already and its history and its origin, right? We uh, quoted uh, Albert Rivera, who was the high-ranking Jesuit priest, who went into the backstory on Islam and how the Vatican has all that information in their secret vaults and how they set up Muhammad, the St. Augustine monks, because they wanted power and rulership or control of Jerusalem. And take the influence away from the Jews, man. Right? Who was following Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? So they raised up the Arabs against him and it backfired. And this is why you have this nonsense today, man. With this whole Islam and Muhammad. Right? Who was uh who trained his wife Khadija. And then you had Walakwa, I believe his name was, who trained this guy, man. So that's a false religion. 
and the Most High is not dealing with Ishmael, you Arabs. Let me get one precept on that. This won't be a long lesson. Like I said, this wasn't the original intent to do this lesson. But what caught my attention, we didn't give two shits about you heathens. You had a Jake couple um, from over here, man. Forgot the particular state. I think it's Maryland or one of those states. Um, they're from West Africa, Sierra Leone. So they're Jake, you know, lead to the spirit. They were Jake. It used all their life savings according to their daughter to make this pilgrimage or this Hajj to Mecca, man. And end up dying in the heat. Now, how foolish is that, man? Okay? How foolish is that, man? Let me get Jeremiah the second chapter. And that heat is no joke, man. 125 degrees? You people are dumb as hell, man. But that's the most high mocking you religions, man. Okay, because that's nowhere in the scriptures. Right? And that sun, like we said, 125 degrees. You there walking in a circle in the desert like a damn zombie. Right? Matter of fact, let me get Judith the eighth chapter. Not because you have this heat wave right now in most parts of the United States. Uh, show you that the sun is no joke, man. And the sun was created by our power. It tells you that with Psalm the 13th chapter, that the first author of beauty created the sun, the moon, and the stars, man. And all the celestial bodies. All right? Let me get that. Judith chapter 8, verse 1. All right? It's how Judith's husband died. Judith chapter 8, and at the time Judith heard thereof, which was a man of daughter Mary, the son of the ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Oziel, the son of Elkia, the son of Ananias, the son of Gideon, the son of Rapayim, the son of Octo, and the son of Elihu, the son of Elab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samuel, and the son of Salasadal, and the son of Israel. And Manasseh was her husband of her tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. So her husband died during the barley harvest. Okay? So, so I believe this is the time around, I think, March or April. Right? Because Israel, um, when you go into the scripture, I also believe that's the book of Ruth as well when they go into the barley harvest. If I can remember. Um, in Israel, pretty much you have two seasons. You have a uh, uh, a dry hot summer and a pretty much a rainy winter okay so he was out there during the barley harvest and what happened for as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field the heat came upon his head and he fell on his bed and died in the city of Bethulia and they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothium and Balamo so how did Judith's husband die? How did she become a widow? Her husband died in the heat. Right? As he was working out there in the field, bounding the sheaves in the fields, man. During the time of the barley harvest. Just like you had them people over there in Saudi Arabia making that hodge in 125 degree heat. Caught a whole bunch of heat strokes, man. And mainly centering on these jakes who save up all their life savings to go over there just to die. Right? Making a pilgrimage not to the Most High, but to an idol, the Kaaba Stone, man. And we go into the history of Kaaba Stone. That was a meteorite that fell out of the sky, and it had many different idols inside of it, man. Islam is rooted in idolatry. That's why they also worship the crescent moon and the star. Allah and the three daughters of Allah. That's all paganism, man. And this is what the Most High said. Let me get Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 27. Jeremiah 2, 27. Um, Most High is cursing out Israel. How you forsook the rivers of living water, the truth. And now you're saying what? Jeremiah 2, 27. This is what Israel is saying. Saying to a stock, a tree, thou art my father. And to a stone thou has brought me forth. You are my creator. This wood and this stone. Right? This is how, this is when you Jake's whether you um, know it or not, when you follow Christianity and Islam, you're worshiping idols, man. Okay? In the case of Islam, that damn Kaaba stone, thou has brought me forth. 
That's when you bow down and kiss the Kaaba, man. Scripture says you're not supposed to um, rent a, um, set up any image of stone in your land as you're supposed to bow down to it and serve it. That's Leviticus 26 and 1. That's against the commandments, man. So, so much for Islam cleaning up the corruption of the scriptures, man. In the Torah, it tells you not to do that, man. And that's why they got judged. And not their face, but in the time of their trouble, they will say, Arise and save us. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise, if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. Where was Allah? Where was the moon God Allah to save you? Right? While 1,300 people died, and it's, it's going to be more. The death toll keeps going up, man. All right? Like I said, man, they spend all their life savings. <laughs> well, you could have heard the truth for free. Right? The prophets is all over Babylon, all over the internet. You spend all your life savings to go to take a, a trip to the, the other side of the world and start here in the freaking desert to walk around the stone, man. Because that's one of the pillars of Islam. Every is, is Muslim, at least once in their lifetime, have to make a pilgrimage to Mecca. And Mecca is not the holy city. Jerusalem is, man. And we know now Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. All right? But you Israelites, you don't want to be the people of the Most High. Okay? This is what the Most High said, Isaiah 55 and 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, because you're thirsty if you follow these different religions. Come ye to the waters. He that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. The water, the wine, and the milk is the word. The scripture says, come, you're supposed to buy and eat without money and without price. We're not charging you anything, man. And you don't have to come see us. It's on the internet. You see? Oh, man. Right? But you spent your life savings. Man, see? Jake is completely out of there, man. See? And, and that, that's not the truth. Islam is not the truth, man. The scripture says, we get Matthew 24, 14. It says... And the gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Islam has over what? Two to three billion followers? That's the leading religion or just right behind Christianity? Right? And it's global, it's everywhere. Right? People come all around the world to walk across to uh to walk around the uh the Kaaba stone, the freaking idol, man, and to bow down to it, man. That's not the truth, man. Right, you had over forty thousand dead Gazans uh, over there in Palestine right now. Where's Allah at, man? Nowhere to be found, man. Okay, because he's nothing more than a mere rock. Okay. Yeah, Allah means God, but what God, man? There's many gods, man. Our power made the heavens. He created everything, and His name is Yahweh. And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And that's another fallacy that they teach in Islam. All right? That Yahweh Shai is not the son of the Most High. That he was just a prophet, man. So that's blaspheming, man. Okay? And they say, oh, that Deuteronomy 18 chapter is talking about Muhammad. That Deuteronomy 18 chapter is talking about Yahweh Shai. Let me get Acts the third chapter. You know, I was going to get Jeremiah the 35th chapter. I may get that too. Say a hard head and stiff neck a nigga is, man. A nigga is something else. Acts 3 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, Deuteronomy 18 chapter, this is Peter speaking the head apostle. A prophet shall the Lord your power raise up unto you of your brethren. Like unto me, him shall he hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. But shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And that's happening to you Israelites right now. Okay? You don't want to listen to Yahweh Shai, like you said. All my reign, all my enemies, which I shall not reign over thee, bring hither and slay them before me. Man. All right? And a lot of you get slain right now. Just like them Jakes got slain in the damn desert, right? By that heat. It says, 
Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and from those that follow after as many as have spoken have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets, who the Israelites. Okay? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob, man. The Lord establishes covenant with Isaac, not Ishmael. Alright? Matter of fact, before I finish, let me read this in the Marie Genesis 26. Ye are the children of the prophets and the covenant which the Most High made with our fathers. Saying unto Abraham, I'm going to get that precept. And in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, the Most High, having raised up his son, Yahweh Shai. Hear that, you Muslims, man? Yes, the Most High has a son, the first begotten of the Father. The first spirit he created out of himself is the one you inly call Jesus Christ. Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right? He sent him to bless you, who the Israelites, and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. And that's what we do, and that's what we preach. That is the gospel, man. Okay? The Most High dealing with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's not dealing with Ishmael, which are you Arabs, man. Got control of Saudi Arabia, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, all that damn oil over there, man. Okay? You guys in your kingdom right now. He's dealing with Isaac. Let me get that. Genesis 26. And there was a famine in the land. Beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto a behemoth. King of the Philistines unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down in Egypt. Dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land. And I will be with thee. And I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed, who Jacob, I will give thee all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven. Because each tribe is like its own nation. Right? So we are like the stars of heaven, which cannot be numbered. And really in the kingdom. All right. And I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because Israel is scattered everywhere. So the Most High is dealing with Isaac, not Ishmael, man. Okay? And yes, he has a son. Yahweh Shai, man. So there's many fallacies and errors in Islam. It is rooted in lies and idolatry. And that's why you people got judged, man. And at the end of the day, let me get 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. <coughs> Let's get that. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 11. do nothing long so they went and made a trip all the way over there just to die man second says 2 and 11 and for this cause the most high shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie and that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness so the most high gave a lot of you jakes into islam man a lot man all right they don't want to deal with christianity and white jesus anymore so they, they deal with Islam because it has some sort of code of conduct, right? But it's still um, a false doctrine. That's a false gospel, all right? Um, just like Christianity, man. They, they follow any other Jesus. That's a false messiah. We have nothing to do with Muhammad, man. Muhammad has nothing to do with this book. He has nothing to do with salvation. He was not the last messenger or prophet. All right. He was a demon, man. Okay. Who was set up by St. Augustine amongst the Vatican, man. To cause nothing but turmoil in the Middle East, man. That's what Islam is, man. All right. And like I said, man. The stone that we follow is Yahweh Shai, and that's the, the foundation of this whole thing. Yahweh Shai is that chief on the stone, and we're building upon him. And nothing is going to stop this truth, man. The gates of hell of death won't prevail against this thing, man. All right? And like I said, man, you Jakes, I was going to read Jeremiah 35th chapter. You just hard-headed, man. 
because I'm sure they came across the videos and you know but um you know to them we just a bunch of niggas on the corner right that's how the most high set this thing up man he said he was going to confound the whole world by the foolishness of preaching and the prophets will be dressed in what sackcloth man the weak things of this world man and he has the prophets everywhere the prophets are in all states man 50 states right different continents the other side of the globe man that's the gospel of the kingdom spreading all right and when the scripture says that they shall all see together man okay now um i was gonna get that chapter but you know let me just close this out man and you don't gotta do nothing long all right this is what job said let me get job 31 verse 26 Right, calling my Al-Bash, <laughs> uh, Islamic dummies, man. Let me get this, Jeremiah 31, 26. It says, this is Job speaking. It says, If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, the celestial bodies, right, which they are beautiful to behold, the sun and the moon, man. and my heart hath secretly enticed, or my mouth had kissed my hand. All right? Let's read on. All right. Matt, let's read on. Why? Because that's how people uh, reverence idols in the past. By bowing down to them and kissing it. Just like the Kaaba stone, man. Just like you even read about Baal, right? When you read 1 Kings 19, 18. So Job said, listen, if I reverence the sun and the moon and, and short reverence, that's what you mean Baal will kiss the hand. I'm going to finish that up. 1 Kings 19, 18. It says, Yet I have left me 7,000 in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which have not kissed him or reverenced him. Man. So let's jump back to Job 31. So Job said, listen, the sun and the moon, like we said, Islam, they have the crescent moon and the star. All right? That's, that's what Allah was, the moon god, man. And the Arabs had a, a god for every single day of the year until they cleared out the Kaaba. All right? And the Kaaba itself is a damn idol, man. That's right. But he said what? Let's read again. Job 31, 26. If I beheld the sun when it shined, or the moon walking in brightness, and my heart had secretly enticed, and my mouth had kissed my hand, or I reverenced him, this also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge, for I should have denied the Most High that is above, man. So by you following Islam and bowing down to Kaaba stone, you are denying the true power in the heavens, man. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, man. And that's why y'all got judged, man. Because that's spiritual fornication. I will close it out with that precept, actually. You get Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter. Okay? So you Jakes are still in Islam. You better repent, man. And throw away that damn um, Quran. All right? And get into these scriptures, man. And come back to your nationality. As the scripture says, to return to the scission of thy own waters, man. Drink the scission of thy own waters. This is your heritage. All right. Let's get it. With Psalm 14 and 12, for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Right. That's spiritual fornication. Right. Fornication is not sex before marriage, man. Sex is sexual immorality. But this is a uh, spiritual. All right. You turn the back on. The father, man. Yeah? Because he said, listen, I'm married unto you. But you're saying unto a stock, unto a rock, you are my father. You brought me forth. That's spiritual fornication. And eventually then the corruption of life. For now they were from the beginning, now they shall be forever. For by the vain glory of men they entered into the world. And therefore they shall come shortly to an end. And that's about to happen. Everything is about to get cast down in these last days, man. Yeah? All right, so the message is to repent and to come out of these false religions, man, and come back to the truth, man, aka the scriptures as an Hebrew Israelite, man. All right, so like I said, man, hopefully the lesson was edifying. Like I said, Kolo Imla Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Shalom.